call to prayer here in a little while. Uh, let's uh, continue to pray, of course, for Sister Janie Harp. Uh, continue to pray for her and her voice. Uh, she'll continually get better. I know she would greatly appreciate that. And then her nephew, uh, Eric, let's remember him, the strongholds he has in his life. Lord knows all about that. Be praying for him. And also, as we sent out on the calling post, let's remember Brother Stephen's cousin as well. The Lord uh, knows all about his spiritual and physical physical conditions, so we want to remember him. And also, uh, pr continue to pray for, uh, for, uh, for the school, and uh, the Lord would just uh, continue to be with uh, the students and the staff, and uh, the Lord would just uh, put a hedge about us and protect us, and uh, we'd greatly appreciate that. Let's remember Mama as well. Uh, she's pretty much, as of right now, she's just going to uh, continue staying at home. And uh, she's kind of put uh, uh, dialysis, I think, all of that off. So uh, let's let's really pray for her. And, and uh, I know that that'll be greatly appreciated. And also, we thank the Lord, Brother John. He got uh, the vent removed today. And uh, matter of fact, I was uh, texting just a moment ago. They were FaceTiming with him again today, or just a few minutes ago, and he's doing uh, exceptionally well for all that he's been through. So appreciate if you'd remember him in your prayers and uh, lift him up to the Lord and also for Skyline Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. All right, and then we've got so many unspoken and uh, requests we need to remember as well. Let's go ahead and stand. We'll open with a word of prayer and let Brother Ken come around and lead us in a song or two, and then uh, we'll we'll get on into the message here in just a few moments. Amen. Brother Josh, how about lead us in a good word of prayer? Yes, Lord. Yes, Amen. Amen. As Brother Ken comes around, let me also mention, uh, talking about praying for the school, we had a good chapel service this morning. I've got a real burden. Uh, of course, we should always have, but I've got a real burden for our young people and our children this year that the Lord would really, I feel like we've got uh, some young people that are lost and don't know the Lord. And uh, just make that a matter of prayer. When you pray for the school, pray for these children. They're their uh, spiritual condition. Wouldn't it be wonderful to see some of these children saved? Amen. Come on, Brother Kim. All right. Let's turn to page 177. Are you washed in the blood? Amen.
praise the Lord Amen. for salvation. Amen. Page 390, there's power in the blood. Amen. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful power in the blood. Amen. songs. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and receive our Wednesday evening offering. That'll be good. Amen. All right. Brother Matthew, pray for us. Yes, Lord. Amen.
address we'll mention again here in just a moment I didn't know it we need to remember brother Clayton he's got bit by something they thought it was a spider they're not sure now what it is but he's having to take a lot of antibiotics and, and uh, all of that so he's pretty sick this evening so let's remember brother Clayton okay go ahead say is she ready amen something to leave their mark when life is through but vain pursuits will count for nothing time will erase whatever we do I want my life to count for something For earthly things will quickly fade No need to add to worldly riches Inside my heart, there burns a question, what was I placed on earth here for? It truly was to build a kingdom. Amen. What a wonderful song. That ought to ring a bell in her heart tonight. My, my mind went directly. I'm going to read it. I could quote it. I'm going to read this verse and then we're going to go to our message tonight. But my mind went directly to Proverbs 22 1. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. 
Amen. Amen. Boy, our desire tonight, we ought to, and I, I like the way that song starts. Everyone wants their name to count for something. Yes. Amen. I mean, let's just be real honest. I talked to the young people this morning a little bit in, in the chapel, and I just asked them, I said, you know, uh, how many of you, uh, uh, how many of you uh, desire is to grow up to be an alcoholic? How many of you desires to grow up and be a dope head? I, I asked the young ladies, I said, and I tried to just cause we had all the children here in the middle, Brother Bill, and you have to be careful. What you, I said, how many of you young ladies want to grow up to be, your heart's desire is to grow up to be a lady of the night and just uh, live from night to night? Come on. Amen. Boy, the devil, he'll just, isn't it amazing? People don't, they don't plan on going that way, but boy, sin will sure take you farther than you want to go. And I want, my, I want my life to count for something. I want it to count for the Lord Jesus. And that should, that should be our desire tonight. That should be our goal tonight. Amen. Let's continue, if we can, turn in your Bible to Psalm 37. We made it down through about verse number 4. And as we do when we're in the middle of a chapter, we have to do just a little bit of review and uh, to pick up maybe for those that may not have been here or just to ref refresh our memory. I asked the young folk this morning, I said, how many of you remember what I preached last chapel? And they couldn't remember. I said, well, how many of you remember what you eat yesterday? And they wasn't but about two out of everybody here. Amen. So I know you don't remember what I preached last Wednesday. Amen. But we preached on fret not. You remember that? In Psalms 37. We want to spend a little bit of time uh, here in this chapter. We're going to try to get from about verse number 5 down through about verse number 11. Amen. If you're there, give us a good amen. amen. Would it be okay if we just go ahead and pick up in verse 1 and read down through verse number 11? Uh, this is some wonderful scripture. Notice verse 1. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Now, Brother Billy, when you was running that X mark today, that's what God's going to do one of these days. What about that? Huh? Amen. That day's a coming. It's a coming. You know, it's amazing. Uh, I got, I've spent about the last two days going through uh, a bunch of Pastor Gentry's books. We built some more shelves, Brother Harry, and trying to go through all of them. And it was amazing at the hundreds of books on the end times, the tribulation period, on and on, just uh, what's coming. I, I read, as a matter of fact, I, Susan was walking by the office this morning. I stopped her and pulled her in there, and I said, look here at the title of this book. It was copyrighted in 1971. You know what the title of it was? When the dollar comes to an end flipped about two pages in the front of it and it dealt with the computer age UN it went to the two things that we're facing now communism and socialism tribulation period don't tell me men of God back years ago wasn't in tune come on yeah. come on brother. yes sir Amen. I went through a bunch of them books and just, it just amazing. And hey, we're living it tonight. Yep. They's coming today. The Lord, he's going to, he's going to fire up the zero turn. Amen. Uh, he might even get out an echo or a steel. He may take the guard off that weed eater. Just, I mean, just, huh? <laughs> 
Yeah. Hey, some of them show an agent. Thank God. I mean, just get them right in the jaw, right there in the mouth. Amen. <laughs> you ever had one of them get a hold of your leg? You know what I'm talking about. Somebody hit me. Amen. Amen. And so, might even get the hedge trammers. Brother Hugh, he's not here tonight. He's getting stitches out of his leg. And he knows all about a hedge trammer right to the shin. Amen. Lord's going to do that to some folk one of these days. You remember that, Brother Matthew? Amen. I got to get back to my script. Where, where, where are y'all taking me tonight? Amen. <laughs> and wither as the green herb. Uh, boy, I can say, I can say something. We got to keep reading. Ron, what's wrong with you tonight? Verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Amen. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Now, I want you to get this pattern. Let me stop right here. Can I stop one more time? I want you to get, notice verse 3, trust in the Lord. Now, you remember, well, I'm, I'll remind you in a minute. Say, I'm fixing to run another rabbit. Verse 4, delight thyself also in the Lord. Verse 5, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in the way. Are you counting these frets in your Bible? We're going to look at that in a minute. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath up, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou, <clears throat> thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, shall delight themselves in the abundance of of peace. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you take our mind now. Lord, may we plant it in your word. May the Spirit of God bring back to our heart and our mind the things in which we've studied. May you preach through us. Lord, may you help your church. May you help your people tonight. Lord, I pray that you'd strengthen us for the battle. God, may you help us to be good soldiers. Lord, I pray that you would enable us, Lord, in the fight in which we're in, to stand our ground. Lord, may you help us to be that that you'd have us to be. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you were here last Wednesday, if you remember, we dealt with the fact that this was <clears throat> this psalm and Psalm 37 was known as acrostic psalm, which means every verse or section of these 40 verses begin with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet, all but two verses, and those are included. And uh, we talked about the alphabet. We talked about how the alphabet is the first thing you learn when you come to school. I went through one of them yearbooks. I seen your picture in 1981, Brother Stephen, this morning. I said, my goodness. Amen. But I looked over there and there I was and I just closed it right quick. Amen. And I seen, you know, my kindergarten picture and I thought about that alphabet and how I learned ABCs. Amen. And that is the instruction. That's where you begin. And here, did you notice those verses as we were reading? There's an instruction that God has laid before us. He said, trust in the Lord. He said, delight thyself in him, commit thy way, rest in the Lord, cease from anger. You see this instruction? But he began it by fret not. 
Yes. I want you to note it. Fret not. And three times here in the scripture, we see that word fret. Fret not. We're going to look at that in just a moment. But we we went through and, and taught a little bit about the righteous uh, man's discovery in verse 1 and 2. And uh, we talked about the righteous man's dwelling in verse number three. He's to dwell in trust in the Lord. That's the only way we're going to make it. David himself had been a fugitive. He knew what it was to be on the run. He knew what it was, even as God's anointed, to have to bury up in a cave and pray for the protection of God. But he found his dwelling place in the Lord. And you know what? He, he never missed a meal. And David himself one day sat upon the throne of his enemy. Boy, think about that. What a wonderful thought. Then verse number four, the righteous man. We saw the righteous righteous man's delight. Boy, I love this verse. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Boy, if you're delighting yourself in the Lord, your heart and the Lord's heart. You remember what was said? What was that Sunday evening? We talked about John the Beloved and how he laid on the, on the breast of the Savior and he felt the very heartbeat. When your heartbeat lines up with the Lord's heartbeat, amen, then you delight yourself in the Lord. He's going to give you the desires of your heart. But wait a minute. Your desire is going to be God's desire. What he wants, then you're going to want. Amen. Boy, what a, what a thought that is. When we focus on, we talked about, when we focus on our problems, we become depressed and overwhelmed. When we focus on our position in Christ, we see the goodness, the grace, and the greatness of our God. His desire becomes our desire. His will becomes our will. Amen. And so we come through this delight. Now notice, I, I don't want to spend too much time on verse number five. But all of these words, this instruction that we find in the beginning of these verses have great meaning tonight. Notice that word commit. Commit thy way unto the Lord. And so, first of all, I want to deal, deal with this tonight. We're going to see the righteous man's dependence. Now, the only way a righteous man is going to survive, he has to learn to depend on the Lord. <clears throat> Got reminded of that, Megan. These, the, I mean, I'm thankful these young uns play ball and all of that, but you find out how dependent they are when they know they're going to need grocery money. Yeah. Amen. Huh? They throw that hand out. Amen. You know why? They come to Dan and say, hey, I need some money. You know what Christians, if you draw close enough, look, you know what you find out? You got to depend on the one. Amen. Amen. And so notice this. Commit thy way. And I'll go ahead and say now, Brother Ron, this is a lot deeper thought than we're going to be able to deal with tonight. But you know what that word commit means? Let, let's use a little country terminology. It means to roll over. Now I've been dog bit a lot in my life. And I've given a few of them a thrashing for it too, but we're not preaching on that tonight. <laughs> but you know what that commit, it may, <clears throat> when a dog lays down, rolls over, and starts wagging that tail, they're committed. I've never had a problem with a dog trying to bite me when they roll over on the back and say, hey, I want to be friends. Commit. It means literally now. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, pulling your chain. Home about dogs. You like that human? I'm not trying. Hey, it means literally to roll over. Commit. Yeah. 
We need to roll over our burdens on the Lord. There's a lot of, we're still dealing with this fret not, and we have these burdens that we carry. You know what it means? What it makes us do? It makes us fret. You know what that word fret? It may not mean what you think it means. It means to blaze. It means to get hot. It means to rage. It means to go without rest. And, and, and David said, hey, you can't look around at the problem problems and the people that have and have not and be upset and be fretting because of what's going on in Brother Craig's life or what God's given him and you don't think he's given you or you get out in the world and you see God seem like he allows people to live however and they got whatever. You can't fret. You can't get mad. You can't blaze. You can't let other things affect you and hear the word of God said, hey, you need to commit your way to me. You need to roll over. You need to quit trying to figure out your own way and realize it's going to take commitment. And here he says, commit thy way. Now here's something. Now these Christians that just come by every once in a while, them things go bad. You know what they want to do first thing? They want to blame God. Now you remember what we closed out with? We just read this verse. We didn't preach from it. We just read from it last Wednesday. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. There's a lot of people that say they trust the Lord, but they're not committed. You like the way the script? Commit thy way unto the Lord. Amen. There's a big difference to say, well, I trust the Lord. Are you committed? Come on. Amen. Boy, I'm telling you, there's a lot of preaching. We need to roll over our burdens on the Lord. He said, my yoke is easy and my burdens light. You're going to find out the things that God wants you to carry. If you're in his will, now here we are, we're, we're committing to him. If you've committed to him, you know what I found out about a dog when he's committed and he rolls over? He's always lower than the master is. Yes. Come on. Yes. I tell you something about the cross. If you get under the cross and bear the Lord's cross with him, you're going to find out he's carrying way more of the load than you're going to carry. Amen. Where we get burnt out is we're trying to carry our load. We're trying to trust in the Lord and not be committed. If you commit to the Lord, trust also in him. He'll bring it to pass. Amen. People get burnt out. They get put out. They get, uh, they get sidetracked because they're not committed. Amen. Roll over your burden. Number two, we need to roll over our blessings. How many times has God blessed us and we ain't thanked him for? Yes, sir. How many times has God given us something? Sometimes we've even prayed about and the flesh will tell us, oh, you know, that happened anyway. Oh, well, that would have took care of itself anyway. Amen. Hey, we need to just thank the Lord. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above. Notice that. We need to roll over our being, everything in us. We need to say, Lord, I'm yours. I'm yours. Amen. Here's a little thought. We're going to move on. God is not in a hurry because we're in a hurry. Right. Just because you're excited about it, just because you're jumping up and down, that don't mean God's giving a whole lot of thought. I remember, and I'm not going to tell who it is, but I remember some years ago, <clears throat> we were visiting some family, and they had a boy. He was on up, I don't know, he was probably 11 or 12 years old. He's bad about pitching fits. I'm talking about Brother Brad, he pitched fit. I'm not about get down in the floor and spin like Opie on Andy Grip. I mean, pitch a fit. And that would, brother, that would run me crazy. Amen. And you know what? I, one day I just prepared myself. I seen it coming on. 
I was sitting there in the chair and he went to pitch and fit. Brother Craig, you know what I done? I got down in the floor beside him and went screaming and hollering and flipping and spinning around. He stopped and looked at me like I was crazy. I said, yeah, it looks pretty stupid, don't it? <laughs> Amen. Hey, God's not excited because you're excited. You better learn to trust him. Amen. We need to trust him. And so we need to, God's not in a hurry because we're in a, 1 Peter 5 and 7 jotted this down. What a wonderful verse. Casting all your care upon him. Why? He cares for you. Why? He cares about you. He knows about you. Don't get nervous. Don't go to fretting. Don't get tore up. He's got a plan. He's got, hey, he's got a better option than the one that you're trying. If you just give it to God, he'll take care of. Yes, man. Amen. Casting all your care upon him. Now let's hurry. I love this little thought. Boy, the Lord just blessed me with this. I hope you get just a glimpse of it the way I got it. <clears throat> Verse number six. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as, notice the wording, the light. Now, there's no, Brother Josh, there's not a bit of righteousness in me. But the light. Are you, are you coming along with me tonight? Yes, sir. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness. He said, hey, I'm going, I tell you what I'm going to do. God's not an Indian giver. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you have my righteousness. Amen. Amen. He's not trying to trade. He's not trying to swap. He said, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you have my righteousness so you can shine as the light. If you see Jesus in me tonight, you better believe it's Jesus. It's not me. Amen. Now notice. Isn't this good? He said, and thy judgment as the noonday. Amen. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, of reading here and, and study here. We're going to have to move on. And so we see right, the righteous man, his dependence. Notice verse number seven. The righteous man's discipline. Notice what the Bible said. Rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him. Here it is again. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in the way. In other words, don't get mad. Don't get tore up. We all been guilty. There ain't no need in trying to put on a fake grin tonight. Hey, we all been guilty getting tore up because of something somebody else does. Hey, that's their business. There's a judgment day coming for Brother Stephen just like there is for me. Why should I be worried about what he's doing? Do you not believe he's, God's a righteous judge? He's the one running the X mark tonight. He done sharpened the blades, Brother Craig. Amen. And so, hey, there's no, and I tell you what, if we'd learn, if we really believe tonight God's as righteous and holy as we read about and what we think about, he's, he's going to take care of all this. Yes. I got one goal tonight, Brother Ron, and that's try to keep me straight. And if I got any spare time, I'm going to try to straighten Susan out. Amen. Amen. And so we find right the righteous man's discipline rest in the law. He said, don't get tore up. Don't fret. Rest in me. You know what them sheep do when they're when you know what a sheep does? He won't even hardly look up, he'll just graze. You know why? Because the shepherds, hey, he's the one watching. I love you several years ago, Brother Craig. I got I studied through Psalm 23 and I had to back up and go again. That that psalm is such a blessing. 
And, and you know, the shepherd, he, he, thou preparest the table before me. You know what them shepherds do? They'll go up to, to what they call the mesa, them big flats, Brother Ron, and they'll go through because some of those flowers, they look the same as others. Some are poison, some are not. And they'll pick up, they'll pull ever poisonous weed. They'll pour out the minerals and the salt and whatever them sheep need. They'll carry that staff and, and they'll, did you know them shepherds from just a, a little boy, if his, da hey, if his daddy was a shepherd, he's going to be a shepherd. And they, they whittle them out a, a rod to throw. And as just a boy, they learn how to cast that rod, run off the enemy. Amen. You know what? You're in good hands tonight with the shepherd. You just need to graze. Amen. Know about you, but I, I kind of like that idea. Amen. Just graze. Amen. And so man's discipline. Rest in the Lord. Don't fret. Amen. They some things. I don't know why I'm going to say it, but I'm going to say it tonight. They some things we just need to let go. Amen. And wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. We see people and they'll, they'll do something, you know, and you'll see it on the news or whatever because they made this and they done that. And uh, boy, don't we get tore up. I said we. We get tore up. Amen. And uh, you know what? He, the Lord said that ought not be. Notice verse number 11. We're going to close with this. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves. Notice the, the wording here. In the abundance of of peace. I don't just have peace in the Lord. I got peace that passeth all understanding. I got peace in abundance. I got so much peace, I don't know what to do with high that. Amen. Amen. And so we tell, but the meek shall inherit the earth. Now, one of the things <clears throat> I, I want to say this, <clears throat> one of the things that's so amazing about the teachings of the Lord in the New Testament, you know what he done? He just took the Old Testament and taught it. Amen. Surely your minds already went to the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, 5. Amen. Blessed or blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Hey, there's a better day of coming. Amen. There's a better day of coming. Let's might as well turn over here. Revelation 21, verse 1 and 2. We're going to close tonight. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Boy, what a wonderful day that's going to be. Amen. Boy, they's coming today. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Amen. <clears throat> Don't worry tonight. Don't fret. Don't get beside yourself. And when we pray here just in a moment, you can have an abundant peace in the Lord. And he's got it all worked out on your behalf. Amen. Amen. All right. I tell you what let's do. Let's just have some good uh, altar prayer this evening if we can.